Welcome to how to create a BrainShark presentation. Start by using the most current PowerPoint template. Keep in mind that slides cost nothing, so use as many as you like. It's better to have 30 short slides than 15 long ones. Capture just the main points on your slides. You can elaborate when you narrate. And don't forget to run a spell check. Before, before uploading your deck to BrainShark, you should remove the page numbers. Here's why. BrainShark will create a table of contents for your presentation, so page numbers on each slide are unnecessary. Also, if you add a video slide or question slide to your presentation, the numbers on your slides will not match the numbers shown in the table of contents. And finally, if you wish to reorder your slides, the page numbers on the slides will be out of order. Next, if you have any text that is in bold, change it back to non-bold text. While bold text may look good in PowerPoint, it looks blurry in BrainShark. If you would like to draw attention to some text, change the color or increase the size. Do not use bold. The exception is title font, which is bold. Bigger is better in BrainShark. The font size for the text in the body should fall between the recommended minimum and maximum, which is 14 and 28. Title font is 30. Review your slide titles. Brief, descriptive slide titles are best. Keep in mind that the BrainShark table of contents only shows the first two or three words of each slide title, unless the user rolls over the table of contents text, which is unlikely. So keep your titles short and to the point. Next, we'll look at animations in BrainShark. Animations help make your point and enhance learning. It's best to use the same type of animation for each bullet type. For example, use float in for first level bullets, wipe for second level bullets, and fade for third level bullets. Using the same type of animation will give your presentation a consistent look. Conversely, using a wide variety of animation styles is distracting and makes it harder for your viewers to focus on your message. Typically, it's best to set your animations to start on click. This gives you the ability to control when each animation begins in BrainShark. Note, you may need as long as two seconds between each on-click animation in a series of on-click animations. So, if you have a list of one or two word items, you probably won't have enough time to synchronize the animations to the... Here is a list of some of the animations that work best in BrainShark. The speed for fade should be set to fast or very fast. Wipe works great on single lines of text. When used, the text looks like it's being typed. Float in is a great way to show the many positives of a product or idea. For example, when you use float in with a list of product features, the list of features literally gets longer. Float down works in BrainShark, but has the opposite effect of float in. For example, float down is good to use when you are listing the drawbacks of our competitor's products. The list of negatives just keeps growing. Finally, motion path animations are ideal to use with graphics. Here is an example of a simple motion path animation. There are some, there are some animations that should be avoided in BrainShark. Avoid using a peer. It doesn't always work. Fly in and fly out are distracting. Avoid them. Using blinds doesn't add much. It's okay to use occasionally to add interest, for example, with a photo. You've scrubbed your deck and added animations, so it looks great. Now it's time to focus on how your presentation will sound. The first step to great audio is to create a script. Your recording will sound more professional. In addition, if you create a script, you have the option of allowing your audience to read the notes. Ideally, each slide should have narration that lasts 30 seconds or less. Remember, slides are free, so use as many as you like. It's easier for your audience to stay engaged, learn, and recall what they learned if your content is delivered in small chunks. 
When recording narration, it is critical that you find a good location to record. Narration that is recorded in small conference rooms often sounds as if it was recorded in a closet. Choose a conference room that seats six or more. The conference room should be in a quiet location, away from break rooms or elevators, which can cause unwanted ambient noise. For the best results, use a USB microphone headset with a foam pop guard on the mouthpiece. Adjust the mouthpiece so that it is not directly in front of your mouth. Always use a script and keep your head up while recording. Speak at a slow, clear pace because not everyone in your audience is a native English speaker. Record one or two slides and then stop. Play back your recording and listen carefully. Does it sound loud enough? Is there any unwanted ambient noise? Can you hear any lip smacking, popping, or sharp intakes of air? It is better to make adjustments now than re-record everything later. For the best results, record in one sitting without moving the mouthpiece on your headset. This will ensure that your audio sounds uniform and consistent. Remember these best practices the next time you record. Your listeners will appreciate it. There are three ways to record audio in BrainShark. You can use the telephone or use a microphone to record directly into BrainShark. If you have to record by phone, do not use the speakerphone feature. Use a phone with a corded handset. The best practice is to record using a headset microphone. This method is simple and produces high quality audio. You can also use a digital audio editor to create MP3 files, but you must upload each file into BrainShark, which can be time consuming. Now that your presentation has audio, it's time to synchronize your animations. Under Things You Can Do, click Manage Slides. A list of the slides in your presentation appears. BrainShark indicates which slides have animations by placing a blue star next to them. In this example, slides 5, 6, 7, and 8 have animations. Slide 9 does not. In this example, we'll add the start times for the animations on slide 8. Click the Edit link for slide 8. The next screen that appears shows you the details for the slide. As you can see, the audio that you recorded has a duration of 20 seconds. Also, this slide has three on-click animation timings. You will need to enter the start times with a comma between each time. To determine what times to enter, you can either note them while recording the audio, or you can view the presentation after recording, and note the start times for the on-click animations then. Enter the start times. Now the first animation will begin at 5 seconds, the second at 9 seconds, and the third at 12 seconds. When you are finished, click the Save button at the bottom right of the screen. Thank you.